This happens every single time I make a season or series finale anime review. I get interrupted in the middle of my review. I kid you not, this is my third time recording this review. If I get interrupted one more time, I am going to lose it and there's not gonna be a review up today. Sup everyone, I'm your female otaku and I'm here to review the season one finale of March Comes In Like a Lion. Yes, season two was announced for fall 2017, so we don't have to wait too long, all right? I know some people are gonna be all like, it's gonna take forever, but honestly, I'm so used to doing this since I'm, I watch currently airing anime all the time. So to me, it's not gonna seem that long. <laughs> I'll be fine. Will you be fine? Two episode reviews back, I dedicated almost an entire review talking about how March Comes In Like a Lion story is nowhere near complete, how there's so much more to be done with character development. Cause when we found out the true meaning of the title, March Comes Like the Lion, Like a Lion, you could say that this whole season one is March Comes Like a Lion and season two is Out Like a Lamb. Cause this is the year where things are going to change. This episode, this entire season was practically set up. We got to understand the world, the situation Ray is in, the other characters. We understand now next season is when things are gonna change. And I really like that, but I wouldn't, be that kind of person to say, oh, all of this was prologue. Like, no, I'm not, I'm not that kind of person that believes that, oh, you know, like season ones are like prologues or in something like this case, you know, this was all just prologue and season two is where the main story is. Like, no, I, I wouldn't say that at all. However, I would say that this is arc one and arc one is now over. Arc two, which I would like to call the lamb arc because all of this was all lion all lion for sure. But now we're finally going to reach the lamb to where Ray is going to start socializing more, maybe fix relationships that he has or make some relationship that he currently has stronger, you know, have stronger bonds and stuff. I just want Ray to be happy in the end. I truly care about Ray. We see this one scene where Ray is a child and no one wants to sit next to him on the bus and he decides to go eat lunch way back from everyone else. You know, he's in like the bushes and stuff like that. And he's just admiring the ants and how they're all working as a team. And then the song Fighter by Bump of Chicken plays and Ray starts saying how not only does he have a goal, but everyone has a goal and they're all going to push forward. And I'm just like, Yes, season one truly was March Comes In Like a Lion. The title has so much meaning to the overall story. I love it. I absolutely love it. Just, ah, oh, man. Season one has been something incredible. It is definitely what a slice of life should be. Although I do like the slice of life genre with, you know, the whole cute girls and or cute boys doing, you know, cute mundane things. This here, however, was something that may hit close to home to many of us. And I wouldn't say that this is exaggerated because, you know, with many slice of life, things are exaggerated or they add a little bit of a fantasy touch to them or supernatural touch, things like that, such as interviews with monster girls, flying witch, or, you know, Dragon Maid, stuff like that. Uh, even Tamako Market, there's always some sort of, you know, a little sprinkle here and there to, uh, to exaggerate things. Even Lucky Star, that isn't even a fantasy slice of, slice of life, still has some exaggerated points here and there with some of the characters. But this here, I wouldn't say is exaggerated at all. These characters are people, they do normal things and have regular lives. It's so realistic and it truly does hit every single one of us in some sort of way. <sighs> this is what a slice of life should be. And I love how Shaft was the one that took over this project because you know me and them symbolism. Mm, only Shaft, only Studio Shaft can handle symbolism like that. Although there was more symbolism in the first half of season one than the second half, which if I had to choose, I would have to say I like the first half more than the second half because mainly with Ray's interaction with 
the sisters. The sisters had more screen time and stuff, and I do really love the sisters. And the second arc was focused heavily on the Lion King tournament, and then we got, you know, into Shimada's backstory, which was great and all, don't get me wrong, it's not like I hated the second half. It's just I prefer, you know, the first half more. Uh, which which half did you like more, first or second? Like I said, this was basically, uh, this episode was like setting up for season two for the lamb arc, you can say, with Ray socializing. That's a great place to start. Starting a shogi club, he couldn't start a shogi club. So he combined the show, what would have been the Shogi Club, with the Burners Club. And that whole situation was hilarious, all right? The sensei just went up in there and I was so happy because when I realized that Rei wouldn't be around Hayashida sensei anymore, I was like, oh God, no. Your only friend, man, why? But no, he's still around, gonna be the advisor for the club. And the Burners Club is absolutely hilarious with the third year who looks like a grown man. And he's always looked like that. He's always looked like that. Oh my god. That man's ridiculous. <laughs> but I'm really happy. Like, Ray's going to even befriend even more people with the Burners Club. And Ray's gonna really need that. Him and Ikaido are gonna be practicing with each other even more to hopefully face off in the finals. Ray now has a goal. He is going to fight. He is going to tie up loose ends with a bunch of relationships and bonds that he has currently created, make them stronger, and hopefully move up a rank in Shogi. All right, well, now the wait begins. It won't be too long, don't dwell on it too much. Season two will be here before you know it. Let me know your overall thoughts on season one. Let me know your ranking for season one. To me, I would have to give it uh, a nine out of 10 because uh, there, there, were, there was that one episode it was that one episode with terrible animation. Oh boy, I think that was episode 13 or 12. But uh, it's mainly because I enjoyed the first half more than the second half. And I feel like that, you know, the sisters, again, needed more screen time in the second half. Because they were so important in the first half, but then they were kind of like, you know, not there. <laughs> Barely there in the second half. So, yeah, but that, you know, that's just personal preference for me. Again, just let me know your thoughts your ranking, which did you prefer, first half or second half, and did you have any uh, faults with this anime? Catch me later as I review The Promised Neverland and Samurai Jack. I'm your female otaku. Sayonara.